Does this sound familiar to you? Whenever Marcy asks her daughter Patty to clean up her toys, Patty argues and protests so much that Marcy usually ends up just cleaning up the toys herself to stop the argument. Marcy seems to have fallen into a behavior trap, but the good news is that there are strategies that Marcy can use to get herself out of it. In this episode of Behavior Nation's Caregiver Education video series, we will talk about behavior traps. We will cover what behavior traps and natural contingencies are, how to recognize a behavior trap, and steps that can be taken to avoid or get out of a behavior trap. The first thing you may be wondering is, what is a behavior trap? A behavior trap is when natural contingencies of reinforcement lead to increasing and maintaining challenging behaviors. In other words, the challenging behaviors keep happening because they are being supported by things happening in the child's natural environment. So what do we mean by natural contingencies? Natural contingencies are consequences that occur in the natural environment that can help to reinforce and maintain established behaviors. They are the things that happen during the course of everyday life that either support or discourage the behaviors that people engage in. Some examples of natural contingencies include getting praise for a job well done, feeling full after eating, and getting a good grade after studying for hard for a test. All these things are natural reinforcers that will likely lead a person to continue to put effort into their next project, eat some food when they feel hungry, and study hard the next time they have a test. So if natural contingencies can lead to good things like a child learning the value of job well done, how do they relate to behavior traps? Well, as effective as natural contingencies can be at reinforcing positive behaviors, they can also be just as effective at reinforcing challenging behaviors. Furthermore, since behavior traps are reinforced by natural contingencies, it can be difficult to recognize a behavior trap when it is happening. Some common examples of behavior traps include giving a child something they want to make them calm down, scolding a child when they do something they are not supposed to do, and sending a child on a timeout when they are being disruptive. At this point, you may be wondering how things like scolding or a timeout can work as reinforcers. They are not supposed to be fun, so why would a child want to be scolded or sent on a timeout? Well, that all depends on the function of the child's behavior. One of the best ways to recognize when a behavior trap is occurring and why is to take a moment to stop and think about the function of the challenging behavior the child is engaging in. In other words, what are they getting out of the exchange? One of the core principles of ABA states that all behavior happens for a reason, and the four functions of behavior, or the reasons why a person does something are, to get access to tangibles such as a toy or a snack, to get someone's attention, to escape from a situation they do not want to be in, or simply because engaging in the behavior makes them feel good. Since behavior chats mainly involve interacting with another person, for the purposes of this video, we will look specifically at the tangible, attention, and escape functions of behavior. We cover the four functions in greater detail in another video on the functions of behavior. Click the link in the description below for more information. Now let's take a look at an example of how the tangible function can lead to a behavior trap. Every time Sally's brother Linus has a toy she wants to play with, she cries and wails. In order to keep the peace, Sally's parents have Linus give her the toy so that she stops crying. In this example, Sally is engaging in a tantrum because she wants access to her brother's toy. And by trying to appease her by giving her the toy, her parents have accidentally taught her that she can get what she wants as long as she cries and wails for it. While giving her the toy may lead to some temporary peace and quiet in that moment, it will only lead to continued tantrums in the long run. If you watched our video on reinforcement versus bribery, you may have recognized Sally's situation as an example of bribery. If you have not seen the video and would like to know more about the differences between reinforcement and bribery, a link to it is also included in the description below. Next is the attention seeking function, which can be very difficult to recognize in a behavior trap because it's often hard for parents to see how providing negative attention, such as scolding a child, can be something the child could actually want. Charlie has a habit of throwing his toys down the stairs. 
His parents do not want him to do this and come over and scold him every time they see or hear him throwing toys down the stairs. He laughs every time he sees his parents coming to scold him. To figure out the function of Charlie's throwing habit, you must think about what he does not have before throwing the toy and what he gets afterward. His parents' attention. Even though his parents may have been trying to make him stop throwing by scolding him every time, they ended up becoming the reason why he does it. Since what Charlie actually wanted was his parents' attention, what they have accidentally done is taught him that all he needs to get mom and dad to come talk to him is to chuck a toy down the stairs. The escape function can be another one that is hard to see in a behavior trap because sometimes the punishments caregivers put into place, like a timeout or getting grounded, turn out to be exactly what a child wants. Lucy's least favorite subject is math. Every day during math lesson, Lucy gets out of her seat and starts running around the classroom knocking things off tables. Whenever she does this, the teacher sends her to have a time out at the school office. In this situation, rather than looking at what Lucy does not have before getting up and running around, we instead need to look at the situation she's in, whether or not it's a situation she wants to be in, and if not, how is she getting out of it? Given that math is not a fun subject for Lucy, being sent to the school office actually ends up getting her out of having to sit and attend her least favorite subject. While her teacher may have been trying to get the disruptive behaviors to stop by sending Lucy out of the classroom to think of her actions while sitting in the school office, what she has actually done is taught Lucy that if she does not want to sit through math, she just needs to be disruptive enough to get sent away. Now that you have a better understanding of how to recognize a behavior trap, what can you do to avoid or get out of it? Once the function of behavior and the natural contingencies maintaining it have been determined, the first step is to stop doing whatever it was that was accidentally reinforcing the behavior. In ABA terms, the behavior will be put into an extinction, and engaging in it will no longer get the child what they want. When a behavior is placed on extinction, then various proactive and reactive strategies can be put into place based on the behavior's function. For more information on proactive and reactive strategies, click on the link to our video on the topic in the description below. Now let's go back to Sally and her crying. As you may recall, she was engaging in the behavior in order to get access to her brother's toys. Her parents can put the crying on extinction by no longer having Linus give up his toys when Sally cries for them. Instead of continuing to reinforce the crying, some possible strategies her parents can use is to teach her how to use her words to ask for the toy instead of crying, and to work on her taking turns with Linus when playing with the toys. As Sally begins to learn that crying will get her nowhere, and that communicating and sharing are better ways to get what she wants, her crying for the toys should start to decrease and eventually stop altogether. As for Charlie and his throwing, his parents can put the behavior on extinction by no longer coming to scold him when he throws things down the stairs, and utilize a strategy called planned ignoring that focuses on no longer reinforcing inappropriate attention-seeking behaviors. Rather than reinforcing the throwing, they can instead give Charlie lots of attention when he engages in more appropriate behaviors like calling out mom or dad when he wants them. His parents can also rearrange some things around the house to make it harder for Charlie to throw his toys down the stairs, such as putting up a barrier between Charlie's play area and the stairs so he can no longer get close enough to throw things, or removing his toys from the second floor landing completely and having him play elsewhere when they are busy attending to other things. As with Sally, over time, once Charlie realizes that throwing things down the stairs no longer works to get his parents' attention, the behavior should eventually stop. Now on to Lucy and her running around during math class. The teacher can place her behavior on extinction by no longer sending her to the office and providing her with an escape during math class. Instead, her teacher can try to make math class more tolerable for Lucy by teaching her things like how to communicate and ask for help or a break when she does not understand something or is feeling overwhelmed. Another potential strategy her teacher could use is implementing some form of token economy where Lucy can earn tokens for engaging in math class that she can later exchange for something fun like a toy from the class treasure box or time on the computer. Once Lucy learns that being disruptive during math will not get her out of the lesson and that perhaps math class is not so bad as long as she can ask for help and earn tokens for doing her work, 
she'll eventually stop getting out of her seat and running around to try to avoid Map. Now that you know more about behavior traps and how to recognize them, if you suspect that you may have fallen into behavior trap with your child, you can always reach out to your program manager or clinical supervisor so they can help you come up with a behavior intervention plan that addresses your family's specific needs. Thank you for watching. I hope you have found this video to be helpful. And if you have any further questions, do not hesitate to send us an email at info at behaviornation.com or give us a call at 844-262-8466. You can also check out our website at www.behaviornation.com for more resources. I hope you have a great rest of your day.